Welcome in Chipola Nation. I'm Donnie Tyndall, head men's basketball coach here at Chipola College. Got a special guest with us today, my two guard, Zacco Littleton. Zacco, we're glad to have you here, and uh, I know our fans are excited to kind of hear your story, so let's just get started. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, your high school career, maybe a little bit about your high school coach, your family, etc. Uh, I'm from Albany, Georgia, but I moved to Metro Atlanta. Um, I played at South Cobb, then I played at Osborne, and I graduated from there. Played uh, up under Demarcus Lakes. Um, he's a great coach. He's, his program is improving, and um, I'm glad I helped him start that the right way when he went there and became the head coach. Yeah, now you say South Cobb, and I knew you went there, but uh, I want to say I had a, a young man, may have been at South Gwinnett, though, but South Cobb, do you know the name Sam Goodman at all? Uh, no, sir. Okay, yeah. Sam played for me at Moorhead State, but I think he was a South Cobb guy, and we went to an NCAA tournament with Sam, so hopefully uh, you can win like Sam did, right? Yes, sir, of course. Now, tell me after high school, you made a decision at one point in your career, you had committed to uh, Memphis, right? Yes, sir. And you changed your mind, ended up going to Appalachian State. Tell us what kind of went into that whole process for you as you were making that decision, Zach. Um, I was just trying to find the right fit for myself and my family and uh, somewhere I can grow as a man and as a player. And uh, went to App State, things just didn't go as I expected, but um, I grew from the experience and grew as a player and a, and a man and uh, just took everything as a learning experience. And I think that's the biggest thing. You know, so many of these young men we get at our level have either maybe had to go the prep school route or they went to a Division One school. In Zacco's instance, he goes to App, App State. It didn't work out. But I think you can tell by his answer, you know, there's no bitterness. He understands that, hey, that's the nature of the business sometimes. We have five Division One transfers on our team this year. Um, but the biggest thing to tell these guys all the time, and I think he said it perfectly, is you have to grow and you le learn from each and every experience. And then you were kind of back out as a free agent, right? Like yes, I'm sir. back in the G League and you're, you're looking around and you're trying to make the next decision that you think will be best for you. And I know you had about every junior college in the country recruiting you. What made you pick Chipola? Um, just the atmosphere, the people that you've coached that I know. And uh, my cousin actually played here for you. And I just hear all, hear all the stories about you as a coach and to go prepare people for the next level and prepare people to be a better man and better player once they leave here. Well, Zacco is referring to Chris Gardner. Uh, KG was a young man that I coached for two years, had an outstanding two years, led us to back-to-back -back Final Fours and then signed at Southern University and just a tremendous young man. And when he says he's heard about me, that means if he's talked to KG, he's heard the good and he's heard the bad, right? <laughs> yes, sir, of course. <laughs> but, you know, we, we joke about it, and I do coach my guys hard, at, but we tell them all that on the front end because we want them to know the expectation and the demands when they come here to Chipola. And this is a guy that's embraced that. He loves basketball. He's a gym rat. He's coachable. He's always in there getting extra work, wanting to watch extra film to try to grow and develop as a player. And what I'd like you to tell our fans is, okay, you pick Chipola because of the tradition, maybe a little bit because of Coach Tyndall. But now that you've been here for five, six months, right, because you've yes, been sir. here since June, tell us something – that has surprised you, good or bad, on the basketball side, and then something that has really stood out to you away from basketball that makes Chipola a special place? Um, I'm going to start with the second one. Uh, I didn't expect the community to be like this and all about the players and the atmosphere to be around. Um, I like being around my teammates. They all love basketball. And... Um, what was the first question again? <laughs> well, let, let's go back to your answer on that. You know, when you talk about the community being about our players, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, that that's a great point because so many people here, until they get here, they don't vibe it, they don't feel it, and then they get here and they're like, wow, the campus community, everyone's excited on game day, right? Yeah, Everyone's wanting to know when the next game is. They want to get to know you as a person, and then they go watch you as a player, and inevitably they fall in love. But the community of Mariana, the people that are so uh, accommodating and welcoming to making our players feel important, you felt that from those people, right? Yes, sir, of course. Yeah, like last night we had trunk or treat. Uh, all the people were out were just supportive and wanting to know when the first game was, when the second game was, when we were playing certain player or people or certain teams like that. So, yeah. 
Yeah. That was a surprise for me, yeah. That's great. Yes, well, I love that about Chipola. It's a very, very connected community, and people love their Chipola hoops, that's for sure. Yes, sir. And then back to the first part of that question, maybe something good or bad that has surprised you about the basketball element of being here at Chipola. Um, I feel like I've gotten way better. Um, just you stand on me every day and just – Keep drilling the same thing to me every day, every day, every day. You do something wrong, go back and do it again. You just don't give up on the player. You just keep wanting people to improve and things like that. Yeah, that's and right. and I think you know I tell I tell our players all the time like that's my job. I don't ever want a player to lay his head on the pillow at night and say, man, if Tyndall would have coached me harder, or he would have held me more accountable, I maybe would have been here instead of here. And um, and Zacco's a guy that embraces that. Most of our team does, but I think he's a guy that wants to be coached and he understands the importance of being taught and directed and coached each and every day. And and that's important. And that's why you get better right that's why guys grow and improve and and you've certainly done that um tell me this what do you think about our team first of all as a team collectively maybe the personnel the intensity the strengths weaknesses and then about them as teammates to this point Um, as a collective whole I think we're pretty good we're gonna be pretty solid this year um I like the pieces that we put together and brought in as one this year to try to win national championship and um, as one, as a whole, individually, I like, I, I vibe with all of them pretty good off the court. They're all good people. They love basketball, love being in the gym. Um, I mean, we, we go at it in practice, and off the court, we all best of friends. So, yeah. yeah. And that, and that's cool, you know, a place like Mariana where there's not a lot of nightlife, right? Yes, sir. Not a lot of different things going on. It's you guys hanging out at the dorm, playing video games, talking yeah. talking trash, having a good time, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Tell me this. Who's the funniest guy on the team in your opinion? Uh, I think Miles Grace. Uh, it's just, we got a few funny guys. AJ. AJ. Yeah. See, and it, it's so yeah. amazing to me. When I don't see those guys in that setting as much, so a guy like Miles, who doesn't say much around me, but then I had two or three guys say, oh, he's hilarious, yeah. Coach. You know, he's always cracking jokes and having fun. So I think that's pretty cool. You guys get to know each other in that regard and have a good time away from the floor. Well, I always give each guest on the show, Zacho, a chance to ask Coach T a question. So there can't be no hard, tricky stuff. Now, take it easy on me, but any question you may have for me, I could answer for our fans. Uh, how did you feel when you were coaching the NCAA tournament? How did I feel when I was coaching the NCAA tournament? Well, I was fortunate enough to be in, I guess, let's see, one as an assistant coach when I was at LSU. We went to the Sweet 16, two as a head coach uh, when I was at Moorhead State, and um, probably – it's such a surreal feeling, Zach, because you grow up your entire life thinking about that. I wasn't fortunate enough to play in one as a player, played Division One, but never made the NCAA tournament. And um, so the whole build up to it as you're practicing and preparing from that Sunday afternoon when you hear your name called until that Thursday or Friday when you actually play, it's just kind of a surreal build up of, man, is this really happening? And then, you know, once the game is tipped up, it's really not any different than any game. You're competing, you're coaching, you're making adjustments, you're locked into your team. But I will say the second time we went and we were fortunate enough to play Louisville and beat them in the NCAA tournament, Coach Patino was like, you know, one of my idols, one of the guys I looked up to in the business. And so that's a lifelong memory, not just for me, but for the entire campus community and town of, of Moorhead to, to win a game like that. Um, there's really kind of no words. It almost just feels like a dream when you're a basketball junkie like you and I are. Yes, I mean, it's just something you always hope that it'll happen. And when it does, it almost, you got to pinch yourself like, man, is this really happening? So you're going to get that chance. You know, yes, we got sir. a national tournament to try to get to here. And then you got two or three years left at a Division One school to make that happen. And, and I think that will happen. And, and you'll love every second of it. I promise you yes, that. Sir. All right. Last thing, um, if you have a team goal for this year and an individual goal, let our fans know what it is, will you please? Uh, team goal just to win state, hopefully get to the national tournament and be national champs. Okay, an individual goal? 
uh, just continue to get better every day and keep growing as a player and a person. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Well, I think both of those are pretty realistic goals. Obviously, we know how hard it is to win a state title and get the national tournament, but I think that's uh, something within our reach if we continue to do just what you said as a team that your individual goal is, which is to get better every day and keep improving and keep growing, and I think we'll give ourselves a chance to do just that. Yes, sir. We've got some important dates for you. Uh, November 2nd, which is Thursday. This week, Thursday, we open up at home against Reed State, 7 o'clock tip. And then on the 4th, we play Colin at 7 p.m. And then on the 5th, the next night, we play Southwest Mississippi at 3 that afternoon. So we've got some great basketball coming up right here in the mill. Three, three home games in four days. You'll get to see this guy make a few three-pointers. Hopefully, uh, he'll get in a stance and guard some people too, right, Zach? Yeah, of course. But uh, we're excited about our season. We're excited to have this young man in our program. We hope you'll come out and watch him play, support our team, and we hope to see you this week. Go Indians.